Okay, we have quite a few announcements today. Tomorrow, if you open up your bulletins, uh, we have the Family Fun Day at SELA. And I guess Pastor is telling me that on the website it says something like 9 o'clock. Well, it's actually 11 o'clock that is in your flyer. Tomorrow out at SELA. Tomorrow at 11 o'clock. And then tonight at Joan's house, the other one in here is her annual corn feed that she throws every year. It's a lot of fun. So please try to make both of those. And Pastor, I, some people might not quite have these in their bulletins because Pastor got them to us a little late. Um, and there, it's a thing called Call to Action, um, being a part of the mission. And he wanted me to read this. And this will be next Sabbath, and uh, we would like everybody to be here. Uh, call to action. God has called us to be part of a large mission in our life, a call that leads us into action. Discover how Scripture calls us to action and be a part of areas where God is working now, where we can be a part of. Be part of the action. So this is next Sabbath of what we will be talking about. So please... Um, plan to attend and there's also a survey in there that the uh, uh, church leaders are going to be planning sermons for 2023 and pastor would like everybody to fill these out and give ideas of what kind of sermons and stuff you would like to hear about things you'd like to um, hear and be uh, taught um, where's Juan uh, Juan could you maybe put a basket out there so people can put these in. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Juan will put a basket out there on the, um, on the desk out there. And so after you fill these out, if you could just put them inside of there. Pastor really never, or, or just give them to Juan. Um, Pastor never really told me what he wanted done with them. So, um, Jody, how was your nephew? Oh my. Good, good. So please keep Jody's nephew um, in prayer, Jacob. And I guess Jack and Sarah had surgery this week. Uh, Jack, I guess, had issues again with his hernia. So please keep him in prayer. And Sarah had her knee surgery. Um, if anybody has any prayer requests, in the front of the pews are these green slips. If you would please fill those out, and then we will pray, pray over them, and then uh, we can have them so uh, church leaders and stuff and people can uh, continue to pray for them. Um, on the back of your bulletin, uh, we've started the 40 days of prayer. It started September 1st, and it goes through October 10th. It is a prayer initiative to encourage our members and churches to dedicate themselves to 40 days of prayer. Um, we have a board meeting uh, is every third Monday of the month, which is September 19th. And I guess I'm part of the board again. <laughs> uh, so anyways, and help is needed to teach the kindergarten primary Sabbath school classes. Please call contact Juliana Ramirez. Uh, Midweek Bible studies, one miracle after another at Jack and Linda's. I do not know if they're having that since Jack had surgery. I, okay, it is postponed for a while. And then Revelation chapter by chapter, uh, Monday mornings at 10 o'clock in the fellowship hall, uh, Jed and Jody are teaching. And we have our midweek Bible study um, every Wednesday night at 6 o'clock, which we are uh, doing Proverbs. Um, over the week, I, uh, this past week after last uh, Sabbath school, um, this little story that I found came to mind about being meek and even the lesson that uh, Will taught this morning of how uh, being patient and stuff uh, and uh, God's, God's perfect timing that he has. 
So if I may, I would really like to read this to you. It's called Carl's Garden. Carl was a quiet man. He didn't talk much. He would always greet you with a big smile and a firm handshake. Even after living in our neighborhood for over 50 years, no one could really say they knew him very well. Before his retirement, he took the bus to work each morning. The lone sight of him walking down the street often worried us. He had, he had a slipped hip from a bullet wound received in World War II. Watching him, we worried that although he had survived World War II, he may, he may not make it through our changing uptown neighborhood with its ever-increasing random violence, gangs, and drug activity. When, when, he, <clears throat> when he saw the flyer at our church, at our local church, asking for volunteers for caring for the gardens behind the minister's residence, he responded in his characteristic, unassuming manner. Without fanfare, he just signed up. He was well into his 87th year when the very thing we had always feared finally happened. He was just finishing his watering for the day when three gang members approached him. Ignoring their attempt to imitate him, he simply asked, would you like a drink from the hose? The tallest and toughest looking of the three said, yeah, sure. With a malevolent little smile, as Carl offered the hose to him, the other two grabbed Carl's arm, throwing him down. As the hose snaked crazily over the ground, dousing everything in its way, Carl's assailants stole his retirement watch and his wallet and then fled. Carl tried to get up himself, but he had been thrown down to his bad leg. He lay there trying to gather himself as the minister came running out to help him. Although the minister had witnessed the attack from his window, he couldn't get there fast enough to stop it. Carl, are you okay? Are you hurt? The minister kept asking as he helped Carl to his feet. Carl just passed a hand over his brow and sighed, shaking his head. Just some punk kids. I, ho I hope they'll wise up someday. His wet clothes clung to his slight frame as he bent, into, bent to pick up the hose. He adjusted the hose again and started to water. Confused, a little, confused and a little concerned, the minister asked, Carl, what are you doing? I've got to finish my watering. It's, it's been very dry lately, came the calm reply. Satisfying himself that Carl really was all right, the minister could only marvel. Carl was a man from a different time and a different place. A few weeks later, the three returned. Just as before, they, their threat was unchallenged. Carl again offered them a drink from the hose. This time, they didn't rob him. They wrenched the hose from his hand and drenched him head to foot in the icy water. When they had finished their humiliation of him, they, they sauntered off down the street, throwing catcalls and curses, fall, falling over all, one another, laughing at the hilarity of what they had just done. Carl just watched them. Then he turned toward the warmth giving sun, picked up his hose, and went on with his watering. The summer was quickly fading into fall. Carl was doing some, some tilling when he was startled by the sudden approach of someone behind him. He stumbled and fell into some evergreen branches. As he struggled to, rein his, to regain his footing, he turned to his, sorry, he turned to see the tall leader of the summer tormentors reaching down for him. He braced himself for the expected attack. Don't worry, old man, I'm not going to hurt you this time. The young man spoke softly, still offering the tattooed and scarred hand to Carl. As he helped Carl get up, the man pulled a crumpled bag from his pocket and handed it back to Carl. What's this, Carl asked. It's your stuff, the man explained. It's your stuff back, even the money in your wallet. I don't understand, Carl said. Why would you help me now? The man shifted his feet, seeming embarrassed and ill at ease. I learned something from you, he said. I ran with that gang and hurt people like you. We picked you because you were old and we knew we could, we could do it. But every time we came and did, do, and did something to you, instead of yelling and fighting back, you tried to give us a drink. You didn't hate us for hating you. You kept showing love against our hate. He stopped for a moment. I couldn't sleep after we stole your stuff. 
So here it is back. He paused for another awkward moment, not knowing what more there was to say. That bags, that bags my way of saying thanks for straightening me out, I guess. And with that, he walked off down the street. Carl looked down at the sack in his hand and gingerly opened it. He took out his retirement watch and pulled it back on his wrist. Opening his wallet, he checked for his wedding photo. He gazed for a moment at the young bride that still smiled back at him from all those years ago. He died one cold, after, one day, one cold day after Christmas that winter. Many people attended his funeral in spite of the weather. In particular, the minister noticed a tall young man that he didn't know <clears throat> sitting quietly in a distant corner of the church. The minister spoke of Carl's garden as a lesson of life. In a voice <clears throat> made thick with ushers, usher tears, he said, do, do best and make your garden as beautiful as you can. We will never forget Carl and his garden. The following spring, another flyer went out. It read, person needed to care for Carl's garden. The flyer went unnoticed by busy par partitioners, parishioners until one day when a knock was heard at the minister's office door. Opening the door, the minister saw a pair of scared, scarred and tattooed hands holding the flyer. I believe this is my job, if, you ha if you'll have me, the young man said. The minister recognized him as the same young man who had returned the stolen watch and wallet to Carl. He knew that Carl's kindness had turned this man's life around. As the minister handed him the keys to the garden shed, he said, yes, go take care of Carl's garden and honor him. The man went to work, and over the next several years, he tended the flowers and vegetables just as Carl had done. In that time, he went to college, got married, and became a prominent member of the community. But he never forgot his promise to Carl's memory and kept the garden as beautiful as he thought Carl would have kept it. One day he approached the minister and told him <clears throat> that he, could, he couldn't care for the garden any longer. He explained with a shy and happy smile, my wife just had a baby boy last night and she's bringing him home on Saturday. Well, congratulations, said the minister as he, has handed, as he handed the garden shed keys. That's wonderful. What's the baby's name? Carl, he replied. So the, this story really touched me after uh, today's lesson, too, and last week's lesson of being the meekness that God calls us to have. In uh, no matter if we're persecuted for our faith or just picked on or whatever, God's love, no matter how we show it, is always planting seeds. offering.
Happy Sabbath. Hey kids, get up and pray for the offering, okay? Any one of you wants to pray and give thanks to God for the offering? Let's see. Come on, come over here. They told me to stand right here, so you want to say thank you, Lord, for the offering? Thank you, Jesus, for, for accepting us. Thank you for, for, for giving my, my grandma food and everybody else enough food to eat. And bless us for our food and, and, and take care of us, Jesus. And we thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. And we thank you, Lord, for the offering, too, and for everything else. Okay, uh, I have a, sto a story for you guys. Um, Calvin, come over here. Uh, in August, this past month, I went to, to Mexico and to visit my parents. And while we were over there, my son and I, uh, we, went, we went to the beach, to the ocean. How many of you have been uh, in to, uh, to the ocean? You too? Okay. Okay, good, good. I know you too. You went to Seattle and you can see the ocean over there too. Okay, well, we went to the beach uh, to a place called Ciguatanejo. It's really nice over there and the beach is um, really calm. There, uh, um, that side uh, of the beach where we were didn't have those uh, big waves that bam, break down really bad. No, it was really calm, and you can go far into the uh, sea, the, the sea, and the water was just up to here, and then little waves, small waves, uh, uh, came, and and you will you will just jump and come down again, and it was so much fun. But guess what? The, the sun was up there like always uh, in the morning, and, and the, the salt from the water uh, uh, and the sun is not a very good combination. They burn your skin. And uh, we were there having fun, and later on and I started to feel my, my face kind of uh, bad, like it was burned, and that. Uh, and I said, we better go out. We better go back home now because the, uh, my skin hurts. And we went outside and, and guess what? A, a big cloud came and covered the sun. And I said, we can go back there one, one more time for a little while. It's, it's cloudy now, so let's go. And we went, we went back and I stayed there for uh, like half an hour longer. And then I started to feel again, and I said, let's go now. And um, uh, we went back home, and on our way home, I started, uh, my son, he didn't want me to touch him here because he didn't have a shirt on, and he um, got a sunburn, and I had my face. I had a, a, a shirt on, but uh, my arms, you can see they're little, it's brown, tan, a, a nice tan. And, uh, and my face was red, really red. So uh, I was hurting. And I remember when I was a little girl, a little kid, like you guys, your age, uh, my dad used to take us to, to the beach every year on, in summertime. And every year, uh, when we went in to swim in, in, in the water, uh, We'll last there a few hours, two, three hours. And at night, it was, it was, it's embarrassing because it was every time we went to the beach every year, we will get sunburned. And at night, we will walk like this. Oh, don't touch me, don't touch me. And, and uh, we couldn't sleep because, because of the sunburn. So, there is a lesson here that we need to learn because while you're, we were swimming and all, we were having fun, uh, my mom used to say, put something, put a, a, a blocker, a sunblock for your, uh, in your face, your arms, you know, so you, you won't get sunburned. 
we will do it, but then we'll go swimming and, and we'll rinse off and, uh, and we forgot to put it again to reapply it. And, and we were having fun. We didn't want to get out of, out of the water. And, and, but at night, we were paying the consequences. We were hurting, and, 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 uh, and it was every time, every year happened the same thing to all of us. And uh, uh, must be because our skin is, is uh, so white that just a little bit of, of sun, it will give us a, a sunburn. And, uh, well, the, the lesson here is this, that we need to learn. We, we can apply that to different things, like um, when, you, when you're playing at home at night, for example, and, and, and your mom says, hey, it's time to go to sleep. But you're having fun, right? You're playing uh, with toys or your phone or your laptop, whatever. And you're, you're having fun, and you don't want to stop uh, playing. But mom says, it's time, it's late, you need to, to go to sleep because in the morning you're going to a school, it's a school night, and you need to get up early. So you don't listen, you're still there like swimming, but you're playing. And uh, um, in the morning when it's time to, you go to bed late, and when it's time to wake up in the morning to go to school, you didn't have enough sleep. You were playing for, long, for a long time, you went late to bed, you didn't have enough sleep, and, uh, and now you're paying the consequences. Why? Because you're at school and you're going like, uh, you're sleeping, right? You're, you didn't rest, and, and that doesn't feel good, does it? When, when you need to pay attention and you're tired, yeah, so it's like me. I was having fun swimming, and I didn't realize that it was way too long. I should have stopped, you know, a certain time. And, and so we need to pay attention to what we do and when we do it. And most of all, pay attention to when your mom or dad says, it's time, it's time. Stop what you're doing and do what is next thing to, the next thing to do. Do you agree? Yeah. Are, are we going to listen? We all need to listen because we grown ups, like I said, uh, I had that experience and it's not like I forgot. I remember I even told my son, you know, this used to happen to us when we were kids and it happened again. So we need to pay attention, okay, and, and remember what, what is good for us. Okay, so thank you. You can go back to your seats. You're tired. You didn't have enough sleep.
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this Sabbath day. We thank you for all the blessings you've given us up to this point. We ask, Lord, that you will bless us with your Holy Spirit and bless those that are on their way. Lord, those that are uh, worshiping in other churches. Lord, bless those in the world, Lord, that need you, the Savior, as we do. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, stand with me and let us sing. I will sing of my Redeemer. Open your hymnals with me on hymn number 343. 
Once a pastor was visiting a foreign country and had to go to the airport before sunrise, so we hired a taxi. The driver was not using any GPS, but seemed quite confident about the direction to the airport. Then he started driving around the city looking for the right exit. The pastor looking at his watch realized that check-in was now open, opened. Finally, on the, highways, on the highway, the driver explained that he had never been to the airport, but a friend had, friend had once given him the directions. Regularly, he was craning his, craning his neck to look for road signs. The driver was hesitant, and this made the pastor nervous. After 30 minutes, the supposed dura duration of the trip, the car had stopped on a narrow stretch in the middle of, the, of nowhere. The confused driver made several phone calls. Time was running out, check-in was, was now closed, and the pastor was stuck with the driver, who still did not know the direction to the airport. It does not, it does not have to be f so far, sorry, it does not have to be so far to be so far our life's journey. From the very beginning and until today, our God knows and gives us the best directions. Those who follow his instructions are on track to reach their goals and the final destination. This week, we, this week as we worship with our tithe and regular offerings, let us remember the instructions of our heavenly teacher. The deacons will now wait on us. God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, our holy heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Dear Lord, indeed you are the wisest instructor. We invite you to lead us in our life's decisions and the management of our resources. Please bless this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, Praise time. Is there anybody, I know there's got to be everybody, that has something that they would really like to praise the Lord for? Oh, come on now. Everybody's got to have a praise. I mean, you're alive, you're here. I mean, Jesus came to save us all and, I mean, just pours out his blessings on us every day. So um, I just want to praise the Lord because um, he is patient and he endures all things, he, all our mistakes he forgives, and Amen. we just, uh, I just praise him for that because he's the perfect father. Amen. Anybody else? Oh, Joe. 
Well, I'm so grateful that the weather is turning colder. Yes, um, amen. And the harvest is coming in, and it's a gift from God for his people. And I praise him for him being so good. Amen. Anybody else? Yeah, uh, the yep. church in the Philippines, uh, one of the girls was kind of uh, being rebellious, but now she's back in church. I praise God for that. Amen. Anybody else have anything they want to praise the Lord for today? Okay, if we, whoever is able to kneel, uh, please kneel, and I will have a prayer with you all. Gracious Lord, we're so thankful for all that you do for us and all the many blessings that you pour out on us. Um, you've heard a few of them here today. Um, we have a lot of prayers too, Lord, in this uh, crazy, messed up world that we live in. But Lord, we know that you are in control and, and that we just need to continue to put our faith and trust in you and, and uh, keep looking for you in everything that we do. Um, you are just so wonderful to us for all the forgiveness and the uh, um, continued blessings that you pour on us. So please, Lord, be with us as we continue this service. In Jesus' name, amen. Romans. Chapter 12 through 3. And be not confirmed to this renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I will ask Will to come up here and I will say a prayer with him. Gracious Lord, we just want to thank you for having Will here with us today and he's, uh, he's going to present your word to us, Lord. So I ask you, Lord, to open our hearts and our minds and uh, the words that he speaks to us uh, through you that they may renew our spirits. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Good morning, everyone. So the last time I was up here, we were sharing, I was sharing about the gifts of the Spirit. And I remember saying that I hadn't finished, but it was time to go. And there was le something left on my agenda there, and it was the old and the new life. And so we're going to pick up there uh, today. But before I proceed, I'm going to ask for the blessing of the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, I ask that the Holy Spirit will be with me and put your words in my mouth, Lord, as we study your Bible, that we will get light, Lord, from these words. And that we'll move this, Lord, with others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we're going to get a little background. We're going to go to... Uh, John chapter 3 to do that. St. John chapter 3. Where Nicodemus has come to God. Jody just reminded me of something. Just a minute, please. A drink, I realized my throat was dry. And then you can hear my, my voice gets dry, so I appreciate that. Thank you for the reminder. And it starts cracking. So anyway, looking at John, chapter 3, verse 3, 
And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Verse 4, Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Now, I pause there for a second because it doesn't matter if you're 60 years old, 70 years old, 16, or even one day, you cannot return into your mother's womb. And that's significant. It's not working. <laughs> you can Thank you. That works. So, um, It cannot uh, be, the person cannot be awakened, or not, excuse me, wake the computer up. The person not, cannot return to the mother's womb. And it's significant that it doesn't matter if it's only a day later. Because at that point, you are now in the old phase. Okay. Verse 5, and Jesus answered, Verily I say unto, verily I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So there's a transformation that needs to happen. And that's what we're going to discuss today. So we're going to fast forward and we're going to jump to John, same book, going to the 14th, 14th chapter, verse 8 through 10. And Jesus is talking to Philip there. And Philip asked the question, he says, show us the Father. And then Jesus says unto him, I have been so long with you, yet hath thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how saith thou then, show me the Father? Believe thou not that I am in the Father? And the Father in me, the word that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, and that dwelleth in me, he dwelleth, he doeth the work. Some key words here is, what I want you to pull out of this is, the Father, Jesus is saying, if you've seen the Father, you've seen me. The Father dwells in him. Moving down to verse 16. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because he seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth in you, and shall be in you. Did you catch that? Jesus was telling Philip, that haven't you asked the question, haven't you seen the Father? You've seen me, you've seen the Father. In verse 7, 8, 9, and 10. And now he's telling us in verse 16 and 17 that he's going to give us the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. 
and then the Holy Spirit is going to be in us. This is part of that transformation, the renewing of the mind that we need to understand. I want to go to um, the late, uh, no Romans, where Philippi was. Chapter 12. We'll start at one and two. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present yourselves, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not transform, conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may, may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. In Galatians chapter 5, it gives us a list of uh, characteristics of the old man and of the new man. I thought to make a little slideshow, if it'll work for me, about some of the characteristics that we read in this chapter. And we're gonna start looking at verses uh, 19. Remember, Jesus had told Nicodemus that you got the flesh, you have to convert the flesh. And I'm going to get the specific words. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So we need to, we're getting the connection here. If you're part, if you're the flesh, you have to be born out of that, right? You're going to have to be converted, a renewing of your mind. Is it showing up back there, guys? No. So uh, in 19, it says... Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, uh, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, virulence, emotions, emotions, wrath, strife, seditions, and heresies. So these are the things that we're wanting to get out of ourselves. So we know that represents witchcraft. Idolatry. Some other things, I mean, idolatry could even be our TVs, our phones, our cars, things that we focus on other than God.
So we have murder there, drunkenness, rage, strife. This one, I didn't know what to call it. It's just kind of hanging out. <laughs> so, you know, drunk, drunkenness and he's having a hangover, right? Pride is another one. <laughs> if you look at the guy standing, right? I'm going to read something from... Uh, manuscripts, and it says, the, the church board, the church, the beloved of God. God is leading out a people. He has chosen, he has a chosen people, a church on earth, whom he has made a depository of his law. He has committed them the sake, to a sacred trust and eternal truth. To be given to the world. He would reprove and correct them. The message to the Laodiceans is applicable to the Seventh day Adventists who have made, who have had a great light and have not walked in the light. It is, it is those who have made great professions but have not kept in step with their leader, which is Jesus Christ, that will be spewed out of the mouth un unless they repent. The message to pronounce the Seventh-day Adventist Church is Babylon. The call of the people of God out of her does not come from the heavenly messenger or from human agents inspired by the Holy Spirit. The true witness, which you can consider the Old and the New Testament or Jesus himself, says, I counsel thee by the gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich in white raiment, and that thou mayest be clothed, and that thou shame of thy Nakedness not be appeared, not appear, and the ointment with thine eyes, with the with eye salve, thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous therefore and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and will sup with him, and he with me. To him that overcometh, I will grant to sit with me in, the th in my throne, even as I overcome and am set down by my Father in the throne. Revelations 3, 20, 18 through 21. What I want us to see and understand is that as we're forming ourselves and renewing our minds, we have to walk in step with Jesus as we learn and acknowledge his word and his commandments. We hold true to them and we teach other people these laws and these commands. As, as it stated here, we need to be zealous about it. But as we step out of, get out of step and we're rebuked by God, and chasten not to be upset or turned away, downcast, if it were. To, but to understand that it's a part of the process. For none of us are perfect. As the word says, we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But the reality is, he hasn't left us. And that's the good news. I thought to go to the Beatitudes because these are other gifts in areas where we find the new man. But before I go there, I'm going to go to Ephesians. 
We're going to be in the fourth chapter. And now we're talking about the new man, what we should see in ourselves after we have made our choice. What was that choice? Romans 10, 9 tells us the choice. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth, Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Nicodemus was a, uh, a Pharisee and a part of the Sanhedrin, and he hadn't gotten this part yet. He needed, to, in fact, it, it hadn't even come to his mind because the Messiah was just in the, had just arrived on the scene. So this is something that we need to realize, and I, just about everyone here of age already knows this, of course, but there are other people that we're, we need to talk to that don't have this point. They have to confess God first. That's the first step in becoming the new man, walking in the new faith. And as all of us can testify that have been in the faith for a while, it's going to be a process. Ephesians 4:17. says, this I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as another Gentile walks, in the vanity of, the mind, of their mind, having the understanding of darkness, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of their blindness of the heart, of their heart. Verse 19, who being past feelings have given themselves over to lavish satiousness and the works of uncleanliness and greediness. But here it is, you have not, but ye have not learned Christ. If ye, if so, by be that Ye have heard him, heard him, and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus. Ye put off concerning the former conversations of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that ye put on the new man, which God is created in righteousness and true holiness. We need to let go of the old man and put on the new man, loving one another. Put on the fruits of the spirit which is found in Galatians, the other half. Starting in 22, Galatians 5, 22. The fruits of the spirit are love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. When I was talking and sharing about the gifts of the Spirit, these are gifts of the Spirit as well. And as we realize our new state, 
we need to realize if we don't have these things and we're not presenting these things in ourselves and sharing with other people, then we have to ask the question, are we in a new state? Are we being converted or is our mind being renewed by God, by the Holy Spirit? And as we're learning in our, our quarterly lesson, it's a process. We're waiting on these things, waiting in the sense that we are working, working, allowing the Holy Spirit to work in us, I'll say, to develop our character so that these things are present. In 1 Thessalonians, it says, five and five, but concerning these times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you, for you have known perfectly that the day of the Lord so come as a thief in the night. So when they say peace and safety and sudden destruction comes upon them as they labor in pains upon the as they, as laboring pains upon a pregnant woman and they call not escape and they shall not escape but you brethren are not in darkness so that the day of the day should not overtake you as a thief you are all sons of light and sons of the day we are not in the night nor in darkness therefore let us not sleep as the, as others do but let us watch and be sober so that watch and be sober so those who sleep sleep at night and those who get drunk get drunk at night but let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and as the helmet of hope and salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but obtain salvation through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. So the idea, again, is maintaining ourselves, learning and growing in faith so that our gifts are used in the body, used as we walk throughout our day, showing others that we have been, we have been and ha are being transformed by Jesus, transformed by the Holy Spirit so that others will see Christ in us. So I pray that everyone 10 years or older have made their minds up to be saved and to stay saved by the transforming of the mind, listening to God's word daily, or reading, listening and reading God's word daily. Outing the old man from our bodies, from our minds, putting him out, putting her out. Those thoughts, those behaviors that we've had of the old man repenting of them as the Holy Spirit, as the Holy Spirit leads us doing this on a continuum, we will, doing this on a continuum, will keep you in the light of God's presence until the eternal sleep or Jesus returns. In the churches and the places that I've come from before, there's always at the end a call of the altar, a call to the altar. We don't do that here on a regular basis. 
So I'll do it this way. Just everybody think in your heart and in your mind. Make a resolution that reaffirming that you have confessed your sins to Jesus Christ. He is your Lord and Savior. And if you haven't, speak to me or anyone else about that process. Because in order for us to function as a body, as I was doing this, we have to have that solidified. That's a first step. We're talking about the gifts of the Spirit again. If we are wanting to use our gifts of the Spirit, we have to solidify that process first. And if we want to con congeal ourselves as a body of Christ and work in the community as individuals and as units, that process has to be sealed as well. So let us, in our own hearts and minds, between you and Jesus, the, the triune Godhead, make that decision. Let us have the closing hymn, please, and then we'll pray. closing song open your hymnals on hymn number 337 and let us sing redeem 337 please stand Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your redeeming love. We ask, Lord, as we separate and go our own ways, that you will not leave us, and that these thoughts of renewing our mind and staying close to you in our beliefs and on what we've been taught and commanded to do will resonate and stay with us. We ask you in Jesus' name to bless us as we go and bless others. Amen.